funny story. When I was raising a stink about this issue about seven, eight years ago at Cornell, the, uh, the food science department at Cornell brought in the expert on these diseases, Dr. C.J. Gibbs, the head of the Brain Studies Laboratory at National Institutes of Health, to kind of put everyone's mind at ease. He actually did quite the opposite. But, you know, I shot up my hand to get in the first question. No, I got in the second question. The first question went to uh, one of the food science professors, a long white lab coat, who said, you know, we know about E. coli, cook the meat through, you know, what food preparation methods can we use to eliminate the risk of contracting BSE, or mad cow disease. And Dr. Gibbs, with a straight face, mind you, said, well, there are three ways. One, you can take your side of beef and you can autoclave it for an hour, which is this high-pressure hospital sterilization technique. Or you can take your burger and you can marinate it in a concentrated alkali like Drano. Or he said, you know, you could marinate your burger in Clorox bleach, but it has to be fresh bleach. As soon as you open the cap, the potency starts to decline. Prions have been called the smallest, most lethal, self-perpetuating biological entities in the world. Before I address the North American situation, I just want to back up a step. Where did this disease come from in the first place? Well, one of the leading guesses as to how cows got it was by eating diseased sheep infected with a sheep spongiform encephalopathy called scrapie. Now, for those of you thinking, wait a second, cows don't eat sheep. I hate to dispel myths of picturesque pastures and fragrant hay, but this is modern agribusiness. And in modern agribusiness, we feed cows and livestock protein concentrates, or meat and bone meal, both euphemisms for mashed up bits of animals boiled or rendered down into animal feed, animal feed which we feed to dairy cows, for example, in this country, to increase milk production. So for example, if you just feed dairy cows grass, hay, alfalfa, you know, they just make 10 to 50 pounds of milk a day. As one Cornell dairy specialist put it, quote, you just cannot get a reasonable amount of milk without supplements, unquote. You can give them corn or soybeans as a protein supplement, perfectly good plant protein sources, but slaughterhouse waste is generally cheaper. So not only have we made cows into meat eaters, but cannibals as well. And you know, because of the commingling of many different animals' body parts at the feed plant, at the feed mills and the rendering plants, the average cow, pig, chicken, etc., eats the body parts of thousands of different animals over their short lifetime. It's kind of like unsafe sex. You're not just eating that cow, you're eating every cow that that cow ate. And in fact, you may be surprised to learn that each quarter pound's worth of ground beef in a hamburger can contain the flesh of up to a thousand different animals. That's a lot of sex. And indeed, it was this rendered cattle protein into the cattle food supply, which we think led to the British epidemic's explosive spread. And that's what we're worried about here in the United States. On that faded Oprah show, Oprah tried to remind the audience that cows are supposed to be herbivores. And in response, Gary Weber, director for the National Cattlemen's Beef Association, stammered, in my favorite mad cow quote of all time, quote, now keep in mind before you, you view the ruminant animal, the cow is simply a vegetarian. Remember, they drink milk. <laughs> I love that. A little over a year ago, I debated these two cattle ranchers at uh, Chico State University, which is ag school in California, and they brought up Dr. John Moss from UC Davis who is, you know, top expert in his field of uh, veterinary nutrition. Um, he actually chairs the Cattlemen's Animal Disease Research Body. And uh, responding to my assertion that, you know, I don't think farmed animals should be forced to eat blood meal and meat meal and bone meal, he responded, cows are not vegetarians. I was like, yeah, they don't drink milk. Yeah, I heard that. No, 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 no. Cows are not vegetarians because Cows have a rumen, and inside the rumen there are these little animals called bacteria. 
And when they eat grass and stuff, some of those little animals called bacteria get digested, and therefore cows are not vegetarians. I had to be like, I did not pay him to say that. Like, where did this guy take intro bio? Ah. Ah. Um, another brilliant defense of cow cannibalism from the industry, they just keep them coming, um, was from Cornell meat science professor Donald Bierman, who said, quote, Theoretically, the best protein for a dog is dog. For a cat is cat, and for a cow is cow. For that matter, the best protein for a human is human." Unquote. <laughs> By feeding cattle remains to cows in this country, we could get a little epidemic of our own, and then everyone loses, the animals, the industry, consumers, the government certainly. By the time BSE was officially recognized in 1986, there were vast numbers of cattle already incubating the disease. Because of this three to eight year incubation period in cattle too, it may be too late already to stop an outbreak. In fact, our Food and Drug Administration predicted years ago that once a single case of BSE was found in the United States, even if a total ban on feeding animal protein to animals were immediately enacted, it would still be possible that as many as 299,000 infected cows could be found in the subsequent 11 years. That is what we're facing. It would seem absolutely necessary to enact a ban and stop feeding cows to cows. And the good news is, after years of fighting the industry, 1997, we got our ban. The ban says you cannot feed the muscles or bones of most animals to cows and sheep. Hey, we got our ban, everyone's happy? Well, there are a couple loopholes. In fact, loopholes big enough to drive whole herds of mad cows through more holes than a mad cow's brain. Blood was exempted from the U.S. feed ban. You could still feed calves cow blood collected at the slaughterhouse. Now wait, why would they feed the calf their mother's blood when you can just feed them their mother's milk? There we go, right? Hey, wait a second, that's our milk, right? That belongs on the shelves, right? Well, then wait a second, what do calves drink? Well, the calves get milk replacer, which too often contains spray-dried cattle blood as a protein-rich component. Cow blood is also fed to other animals, such as young pigs, for example. Sometimes they just put it in the water supply of these animals. It seems cows won't eat feed composed of more than like 10% blood because they can taste it and just don't like it. But chickens, you can feed chickens feed up to 35% blood and they just check, you know, they just peck away, very happy. The industry is very excited to, about that fact. If the U.S. government has been so sure that blood is not infectious, why was there a major change in American blood supply many years ago? Anyone who's, trying to give, who's tried to give blood in this country in the last few years, you will notice they ask a few more questions. Basically, anyone who spent a few months in Britain over the last two decades is absolutely excluded from donating blood in this country because they're afraid you went there and ate an infected burger and are currently incubating the disease. In fact, tragically, someone just last month became the first person um, dying of the human equivalent of mad cowsies contracted through a blood th transfusion over in Britain. Um, yet, and the reason that they did that, the American Red Cross actually went further and basically bans blood donations from Americans who spent you know, significant time in France or all of Western Europe. And the reason they did that is because we now have experimental proof that indeed blood can indeed be infectious, yet cow blood was still allowed to be fed to livestock in this country. Or farmers could feed cattle remains to chickens and then feed the chicken excrement right back to the cattle. We feed a million tons of chicken feces to cows in this country every single year. In fact, industry studies suggests that the flesh of cows eating bird droppings is actually more tender and juicy than those fed regular feed. 